Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer some questions from this um, Cambridge International AS level paper. This is a pure mathematics one, paper one. Um, this is the specimen paper for the examination from 2020, the 9709 uh, syllabus. And um, this paper here, or this uh, this syllabus, changed in 2020. So I'm going to start with the specimen paper. The school that I teach in is now uh, switched to Cambridge from Edexcel, for whatever reasons they have. And so therefore, as I've mentioned in the past, I answer questions, you know, to help the students that I teach in school. So I'm going to start preparing some material from the um, Cambridge a syllabus as well. Now, there's not much difference in the pure mathematics um, content between Cambridge and Excel. So you could even, you know, use some of the videos I've made in at Excel from the pure mathematics P1 and the pure mathematics P2 from at Excel is basically the same, more or less, as pure mathematics one from um, at Excel from Cambridge. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to start going through the questions here. And as I always uh, mention, I'm going to go through the questions one by one. I'll make a video for question one, another video for question two. Sometimes I even split up different parts of questions into different videos so that I can save the questions um, in the playlist for the paper and also in playlist for the topic. I like to be able to organize my videos in that way so it's, it's easy for people to uh, find topics that they're looking for or to find papers that they're looking for um, when they are searching. So um, I'm going to start with question number one. The other thing I'd like to mention is I'm not just going to be a talking mark scheme. I'm not just going to go through the questions without any explanation. I'm going to try to explain things for those students who didn't have teachers or didn't pay attention at the time when they were supposed to. Whatever. So I'm going, I'm going to go through this um, you know, and try to help students to understand things from the basics um, sometimes. And sometimes I answer a question with a particular kind of thing in my mind that somebody has asked me about. And I try to explain that in the video, um, you know, in some detail sometimes. So please bear with me for those of you, you know, who um, don't need that. If you're just looking for the mark scheme, then maybe this is not the right thing for you to, to be doing. You can go straight to just the printed mark scheme and see if you've got the answer right or wrong and refer to uh, you know the video for those questions where you need help but um, you know I like to go through them in some detail in in some some of the cases so please bear with me there now I'm going to start with question number one in this paper and question number one here is um, the first part of it is basically about finding the gradient between points so it says the following points a b c d and e which are given here lie on the curve y equals f of x. The table below shows the gradients of the chords AE and BE. So AE, its gradient of that chord is 4, and BE, the gradient of the chord is 3. Now, first of all, we have a few words here that some of you might not understand. Okay, we have here a curve, and we have these chords. So what is a chord in relation to a curve? So like a curve, you know, we, we don't know exactly what the um, equation of this curve is, but just say a curve looks like this. All right. Now, a chord is a straight line that connects two points on the curve. A chord is a straight line that connects two points on the curve. So say this is, for example, E and this is A. This would be the chord AE, a straight line connecting those two points. It says AE is 4 and A is 0, 1 and E is 2, 9 and BE is 3 and B is 1, 6 and E is Two, nine. So um, B is getting closer to E and the gradient is getting less. In this case, it's getting more the way I've drawn it. So it obviously means that the curve should look like this instead. It should be this type of curve. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this as a little kind of explanation. So as B is getting closer to E, okay, as you can see, then the gradient of the curve is getting less. That was 4 and this is 3. All right? So we can see that basically this is the gradient between the point A and E. 
And this is the gradient between the point B and E. And you can confirm that. The gradient of a point is the change in Y, which is 9 minus 1, over the change in X, which is 2 minus 0. That's 8 over 2, which is 4, and so on. So we can see that. So they ask us to complete the table to show the gradients of C, E, and D, E. So as I just mentioned, the gradient between two points, okay, the gradient between two points, of a, of a line between two points, is given by the change in Y, you can say y2 minus y1 over the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. You can say y1 minus y2, y2 minus y1, but the point is that the change in y is on the numerator. It's like rise over run. Okay, rise over run. So it's the change in y on the numerator and the change in x in the denominator. So if we're com considering um, between the, for CE, the gradient of CE, we've got to think about these two. Okay, we've got to think about C and E. So I've got C and E. Okay, so I've got to now do the change in Y, which is going to be 9 minus 7.75. 9 minus 7.75 over 2 minus 1.5. 2 minus 1.5. Okay, so that will give us our gradient. Uh, we can just stick that straight in the calculator. Okay, so the calculator... We have 9 minus 7.75 divided by 2 minus 1.5. That gives you 5 over 2, which is the same as 2.5. That's 2.5. And then we've got to find the gradient on between D and E, so M, D, E. So now we're going, going to look at D and E. Okay, so I'm going to look at D and E. So again, it's the change in y, which is 9 minus 8.79, divided by the change in x, which is 2 minus 1.9. Okay, so we'll have that here. So we have 9 minus, well, 2 minus 1.9. And on top here, we have 9 minus 8.79. And that gives us 21 over 10, which is 2.1. That's 2.1. So as we can see, the gradient is getting less and less as we're getting closer and closer to D. The gradient's getting, you can see it's getting less and less. So it's, it's something like, this is the chord, this is C, and this is D, E. Okay, we don't really need to worry about that in this question, in this part of the question anyway. Okay, but that's the answers there. So we got, we filled in the table. Okay, so it says complete the table to show the gradients of C and D. So we've answered part A. So it's basically a part of the syllabus which is telling us about how to find the gradient between two points. So it's to do with straight line graphs. Okay, this particular part, this particular question. But it's kind of related to curves in terms of we have to understand what the chord of a curve is. Now for part two, or part B, sorry, it says state what the values in the table, now this was 2.5 and this was 2.1 as we found, state what the values in the table indicate about the value of F-2. Okay, F-2, what does F-2 mean? Now this is going on to another topic which is to do with differentiation. Okay, so you have F of X and you have F- of X. This is like F of X you could say is Y, and f dash of x, another way of writing this is dy dx. This is basically, this means the gradient function. This is the derivative, the gradient function. So when you find the differential, when you differentiate a function, you get the gradient function. So basically, it's saying is, state what the value in the table indicates about the value of the gradient of the function f when x equals 2. Okay, when x equals 2. All right, so we can see here that the gradient... As uh, we get closer and closer to x equals 2, as the x value gets closer and closer to 2, okay, that the gradient seems to be getting closer and closer to 2. So we can say as, um, as the x value appro approaches 2, Okay, the gradient approaches 2 as well. The gradient, which is f dash of x, is approaching 2. 
Okay, so the value of the gradient is getting closer and closer to 2. Therefore, we can say that this tells us that f dash of 2 is equal to 2. Okay, so that's what the values in the tab table indicate to us about the value of f dash of 2. All right, so there, there we have the answer to um, part B of this question. Just one mark. All you really have to do is write f dash of 2 equals 2. That would be fine. You can just put equals 2. So only one mark. But I'm just giving you some um, you know, understanding of what this actually means. Okay, f dash of something here means the gradient function. Okay, so as, you know, as we get closer and closer and closer to uh, e, the gradient of the chord gets closer and closer and closer to 2. That's what it's basically uh, showing us there. All right, so there's the answer there to part B, and that completes question number one. Yep, that's a completes question number one. I'll save this as its own video, and this will be under the topic of uh, differentiation, basically, because this is this is kind of linked to our understanding of uh, the uh, how to derive the gradient function from first principles. Although we don't need to formally know that, we have to have this understanding of it like they have shown us here. All right, so that completes the question number one. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this uh, region at, at the end of the video. You'll see the link appearing there. Other questions from the topic of differentiation from P1 of Cambridge CIE can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch this video here, which will tell you how to use my channel to look for those things that you might be interested in finding. Thank you for watching and see you soon.